I made two really flowy camisoles in rayon, low-key kami by Pattern Emporium. I'll be sharing all the details, stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Pattern Emporium had a double release, so they released two patterns in the same day. One of them was the Vacation Vibes Palazzo Pants for Wovens, and I've shown you that video yesterday. If you haven't seen it, maybe you want to catch it. Really easy to sew pants, pull up, wide leg, easy easy to fit, easy to sew, easy to wear and I've made myself a pair and my mum a pair. So have a look at that video if you've missed out. I really didn't want to put the low-key kami which is the other pattern release with the palazzo pants in the same video. I just thought it was going to be too long. They are totally different garments. They have nothing to do with each other in terms of sewing. So I thought they have no business being in the same video. So here I am today to share with you my two low-key camis. This is a super easy to wear and easy to fit style that's super flowy, relaxed fit, also designed for woven fabrics. It is sort of like a swing style, a flared style. It is not fitted at the waist and hips at all. It is semi-fitted at the bust. In the front you have three neckline options, one that is rounded, one that is square on the top just straight across and the other one that is a V neckline. For the V neckline you can either put it on the fold or there is actually a line on the pattern where the seam allowance is already there and if you want to put a center front seam you can do that as an option also. I love that because sometimes it's easier to place your fabric like that and you can end up saving a lot of fabric or sometimes it can be a design feature if you want to use one color on one side, one color on the other, maybe do some top stitching. So great options there for the neckline. The back neckline you also have options. One is a rounded neckline and the other one is a square neckline. The neckline is finished with facings inside. They are the type of facings that follow a shape like this. They won't be cutting the bust in half like I've seen in other patterns. So I really like those short facings that are just on the top of the garment. They make sense when I see them. I really know that the designer thought about how this was going to look on the body. For the ties, you can sew a really narrow strap or a wider one. There's both options and you can sew them fixed that is my preference usually or you can sew them just one on the front one on the back and tie them up here on your shoulders the other option is to make them adjustable now i don't have any of those notions to make adjustable things and i always think you know if you're sewing for yourself why would you need to adjust it i just think you know if it's something that you're customizing for yourself i think the fixed strap it's just easier and just more practical. Because this is a swing style and very voluminous at the waist and hips, I would keep the fabric choice to the lightweight flowy types. Maybe some fabrics are a little heavier, but they need to drape. Rayons, rayon blends, your linen blends, crepe, polyester crepe, silk. There are some lightweight woven fabrics that are very lightweight, but they don't drape as well, like cotton voile or cotton lawn, some lightweight shirting. I would be cautious. I mean, maybe it's a style that you want to have. When I've made a swing style garment in those fabrics that don't drape, it just stands away from the body. And I don't feel comfortable in a style like that. Because the low-key kami is a brand new pattern, it is 15% off through Monday noon Australian time, that in the US is Sunday night. And it's not only this pattern, the vacation vibe palazzo pants that I've shown in the previous video are also 15% off, along with a small selection of patterns that could be styled with this one. I will leave you all the information down below if you want to go and get them. I'll leave you my affiliate link that takes you directly there so you can have a look. When you use my link, that directly supports me because I receive a small commission back from these sales. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does support the work that I do here on YouTube. Sizing goes from four to 30 Australian. It goes up to a 58 and three quarter inch hip. There is sort of like a regular bust option where you don't have a dart on the pattern. And there is a darted front option as well. So if your upper bust and your full bust falls within the same size or your full bust is only one size larger than the upper bust on the chart, the dartless version would be okay. Two or more sizes different, then you would choose the dotted version. Now just by sewing a whole bunch of years and knowing that I have a C sewing bust cup size, if there is a dart version available on a woven garment, I'm going to take it. 
So in theory, my upper bust measurement and my full bust measurement have only one size difference in the chart. So maybe I could have gotten away with using the version without the dart, but I know I always feel more comfortable with a dart. So I went for the darted version and I've made a size 16 Australian. Now I want to talk a little bit about making a muslin. Whenever I've made a garment like this, I will always make a muslin. There are too many features here that you can't really measure. You can't do really good flat pattern measurements on a garment like this because you're missing all of this area where there's going to be a strap so I always just like to sew a really quick one up now they always say use a fabric similar to the one you're going to end up using <laughs> I had the plans to make my camis out of rayon but I was not going to waste rayon to make a muslin I had nothing left no, no scraps nothing remember I'm at my parents I'm very very limited in my resources at the moment so I grabbed an old sheet. I mentioned before, and you can see in this photo how the style just falls away from the body because this fabric is really stiff and has no drape. So you can see how that looks. I do not like that, but I know that with the rayon, it's gonna to look totally different. My goal here was to really check the strap length. It's something that's always customizable. I tend to make them a lot shorter than most cami patterns. And that's because I want my armhole cover to be quite high and also my neckline. So when you make your strap shorter, the whole garment scoots up. You can see my bust out there. Now this one is designed to be angled. It goes from the side a little bit up. And you can see that it's just a little higher than my bust point mainly because I raised it because I shortened the strap. If I hadn't have shortened the strap, the bust dart was correctly placed for me. So all I'm gonna do is redirect that. I'm gonna keep it the same on the side and just move the tip down by an inch. Super easy adjustment to do, easier than lowering or raising the whole thing. And I tend to do that when the original dart that you see there is angled. I just move the tip down and then you get sort of more like a straight dart which achieves the same purpose. I'm still removing length from the side and shaping the bust. So super happy with that. I filmed a lot of the sewing for you. It is a pretty short sewing segment anyway, but you will see everything from facings to straps, everything. So let's go and see. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been I've used a larger piece of fabric that's going to fit my facings and then I cut my facings. I'll do this every single time. Here you can see my pattern pieces. There aren't many of them. This is a version that has a center front seam and a v-neckline. I had to do that because of the fabric I had available so I'm very happy there's a seam there in the pattern and it's not a hack. The back is cut on the fold and I'm doing the square neckline on the back. This is my back facing that's already interfaced and my front facing that's interfaced my straps there. I made my straps a little wider and I also widened that area slightly just to fit the bra that I've brought for my travels. I've only brought three and they're all the same and they just have a wider strap than usual. So I made little changes there. It's not going to really affect the look that much. I'm going to be batch sewing all of my pieces. So I'm making two camis. I'll be sewing four straps. The finished width of my straps is one and a quarter inches, so it's slightly wider than the original, but the way that I'm going to sew this is exactly the same. Here I'm sewing the short little side seams that unite the front and the back facing pieces. These have already been interfaced. After these little side seams have been sewn, you can press it open and then we need to serge all the bottom edge of the facing. Here is one of the facings already done for one of my camis. Side seams are sewn and the bottom edges have been serged. You can see that this facing is going to go above the bust, so your bust is going to be down there, it's not going to cut into the bust, and these are my favorite types of facings. Before even touching my cami and doing anything to it, I'm stay stitching the neckline. This is a rounded one, and I'm sewing from the top where the straps are going to be down to the center. Then I flip the fabric and do the same. I want to sew going into the center, not, not the whole thing in one go, just to keep it even. I'm doing the same on these partial armholes from where the strap is over to the side, and the same on the other side. I'll do this with all my camis. This is really important. There are sections cut on bias here and rayon, any fabric you use will want to stretch out and then it might not want to fit into your facing. Super important. I'll do it on the back as well. Here 
here I'm going to be sewing a few bust studs. The version that you're making might have bust studs or not, depending on your bust cup size. I can really control where I let the needle drop right on the edge of the fabric and then I go off to the widest part. I don't back tack there, I knot it by hand, really clean finish there. Look at how that looks on the other side, super clean. Then we're going to press the volume down like this. Now I'm just sewing a lot of side seams, uniting the front and the back of the cami pieces. The shape is flared out. 3-8 seam allowance everywhere and then I'll just give them a quick surge, press them to the back and then I can sew on the facing pieces. When I made my muslin I figured out that this is the distance that I want to chop my straps shorter. So when I sewed this one that you see here you can see that I'm out protruding here between the neckline and the facing. I've decided to leave that excess on the back just because the back is straight here so it's easier to manipulate there. I've tried this on, it's perfect. So for the last one I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna have all that excess. I'm just gonna put my strap here. You can see behind it and cut it off that exact distance. So I don't need to deal with the excess right there. I can just sew it and I know it's the correct length for me, for what I want. So this little bit can go, this little bit can go also. I've already tried it on and confirmed. What you see here is the front neckline, my shoulder strap that I've just trimmed away. For my straps, I've got the seam in the center. That's going to be my wrong side of the strap. This is going to be the right side, although it's all right side of the fabric. So I'm going to put the smooth part touching the neckline there, right sides together. I've centered my straps over this area. You can see I have excess here, excess there. That is the seam allowance there. Here I have my facing. So I'm going to put my facing right sides together, put the neckline in here, slide the facing over it and now I'm just going to match everything, match everything on the round and I'll deal with the back part of the straps later. Here's the neckline again, I've got the facing pinned on right sides together, here's the partial armhole, this is the V neckline, the other armhole then it goes off to the back and the back is a square option. I'm going to be sewing that on the round, I have the straps pinned only to the front area, I still have these loose. I'm going to leave a little gap over here at the back so I can put those in later, I think it's easier that way. But it's just a matter of sewing everything really carefully, pivoting where needed, 3 8 seam allowance. This is the back and this is where I'm going to sew up to there, up to the edge. But here on this flat edge I'm going to leave a gap and I'm going to sew here to there, leaving a gap there so I can put my back strap in later. I'm going to leave about one and a half inches open there so I have enough space to put my strap in. And over here as well, I'm going to stop about there. But you can see I'm going to have space to put my strap in through this opening later. But for now, I'm going to start at the back armhole and go all the way around, the rest is all continuous. Here make sure the side seams of the facing and the side seam of the kami are matching. This is where the strap is in between these two layers, right there. In this case I have a V but if you're doing a rounded it's the same technique, all that changes is the shape here. I'll have a small pivot here later. All I have to do now is come over to the front and find the strap bring it over here, make sure the side of the strap that has the seam is facing up because that's the wrong side, that's the one that's going to touch the facing and this is where I'm just going to slide it into that opening I left right there, right at the edge, so that little bit. Why didn't I do it straight on the round? It's because this gets in the way like this, can get a little bit fiddly, so it's always easier to just do it later like this. Strap, make sure it doesn't twist or go anywhere and just bring it in and Put it through the opening easy peasy after i sew this little bit from the back then the neckline is completely done what i'm going to do there is snip on all the curves turn the facing to the inside and under stitch like you do with every single facing on any garment Here is the v-neckline you can see the snip into the pivot point and over here on these armholes also lots of snips. I don't think I need to trim 
further because 3 8 is acceptable for me push all the seam allowance under the facing and then sew right there on the edge in these areas where the front straps are I'm not going to be able to get all the way but as high as I can there and then pick up on the other side and keep going the way I'm doing it is I'm going to have the facing on my right hand and the garment on my left I don't have a special presser foot to help me sew on the edge this time I'll just be doing it normal and I'll make sure the seam allowance is always underneath the facing and I'm going to sew on the edge. I'm going to start here on the back where it's square, where there's a straight area. That's where I'm going to start. You might recognize this fabric from my mum's wide leg palazzo pants from yesterday. Her vacation vibe pants, the same fabric. There was a tiny bit left and it was perfect. I actually had to use the center seam for the V neckline option. There was no other way I could fit it into the scraps. So that's perfect but because this fabric is so crazy you can barely tell that there's a seam right there i really wanted to have a v-neck line and for both of my camis i use the one that goes straight across i think this is the easiest one to sew if you want to look for an easier option if you do the square neckline front and back it's way easier than doing a v or the curves but i love that on the back i've always loved a straight back like this my straps are one and a quarter inch. They are slightly wider. That means I just needed to widen this area of the pattern a tiny bit this way towards armhole and a tiny bit that way towards the neckline. I do have a video on my channel showing how to do this for any camisole pattern in great detail. So I will leave that link down below as a resource for you because I didn't film at this time. But this covers my bra strap. Very simple. My bust art is right there if you can see the lines get a little bit distorted and i'll show you inside when i finished filming all i had to do was do some hand sewing which was basically just tacking the facings on the side seam right there i also gave it a little hand tack there in the center front seam on the v and do my hem because i don't like seams going across stripes this is hand hemmed I really wanted it to look as nice as possible. I sewed mine at the same time. I was doing the same steps on both. They both have a navy, so I wasn't changing threads. So both of them came out quite quickly. Super happy with this, super flowy. second one I made I used 100% rayon also although this one is slightly heavier than the one you've just seen the one I've just shown you is super lightweight buttery soft just very lightweight this one is heavier it's still 100% rayon and this is this would be classed as a refashion I'll show you a video here of the original garment it was a skirt that I took off a bodice Sometimes I go thrifting and I find a really nice dress. Sometimes it's a size too small in the bodice, but it has a big gathered skirt that I can just remove and then I get a big chunk of fabric that's basically like a rectangle. I had that saved in my mom's closet from the last time I was here two years ago. I remembered I had it and it was just enough to get a cami out of that little scrap. Super nice. This is my refashioned cami made from a skirt. I made sure to put this type of print right in the center of the front I didn't want it to be on another place I love the colors here the blues and the whites the tones very nice this one has the rounded neckline on the front and the same square type of neckline on the back the original skirt had a center back seam so I kept that center back seam on the back this time you can't see it because of the print no one would know there is a seam because all these prints are vertical so you can't tell there's a seam there there are my facings or interfaced or tucked down the same wide strap or the same just a different print so lovely let's see this one on
I love wearing these camis, they're so comfortable, floaty. I could sleep in these if I wanted to. Great to put a kari on top if it gets a little bit cold. I think they're really versatile pieces. And I wish I could have had more variety in the fabrics available for me because I could have styled this with my palazzo pants but I had no fabrics to go with those colors. So hey, these are all blue and I love them and they're gonna suit me very well this summer while I'm over here. Where I brought minimal clothes. I'm actually sewing as I'm here, so I have more options when I go out. Don't forget that the low-key cami and the vacation vibes palazzo pants that I've shown yesterday are both 15% off along with other patterns. I'll leave you all the information down below. I hope you enjoyed seeing this one. Have a great weekend. If you sew on the weekends, I hope you enjoy doing that. And I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.